to um, this setting. This is the Säkerhetspolitisk Sommartorg. Trying to explain it is not the easiest, but let's call it the Security Politics Arena uh, for discussion here at the Politicians Week uh, of Almedalen. Uh, that once started with our then uh, Prime Minister Olof Palme stepping up on a lorry and holding a speech. Since then it's grown and it's now more than 2,000 seminars during a week. And this is one of them. Um, and it's named Even War Has an End. And before I start I have some practical information for all of you participants. Uh, this seminar is being webcast. That means that Uh, later on, when I open up for questions from the audience, um, you will have to use a microphone or else uh, the people watching online won't be able to, to hear your question. You're also welcome to Twitter. Then uh, please use the hashtag Sommartorg um, so that your uh, comments are viewable for everyone else here. Uh, I will open up for questions from the audience, as I mentioned, but I will do that at the end of the seminar. So please remember your questions and then we'll um, address them later on. Yes, for all of you who are perhaps uncertain on where you ended up, uh, you're about to listen to an hour of conversation about the Colombian peace process uh, and Sweden's role. Um, we have a very distinguished panel that has traveled far Um, to to enlighten us on this discussion. Um, and apart from our panelists, we also have two translators, if you're wondering what the two uh, men in the back are doing. Uh, it's Aron Lindblom from um, Kristna Freds and Fredrik Undgla from Latin America Institute, the Institute of Latin America. Um, so now I welcome them. But we also have a distingu distinguished panel here today. Um, we have Natalia Oviedo Mesa, from, uh, who is an advisor of international affairs at the Colombian Agency for Reintegration. We also have uh, Patricia Tobon Yagari, who is a human rights lawyer from Colombia. We have the Swedish ambassador to Colombia, Marie Andersson de Frutos. And uh, finally, we have um, Gloria Amparo Suarez, who is a legal representative at the Organización Femenina Popular, OFP, in Colombia. Uh, and together, the five of us will try to discuss what is currently happening in Colombia, um, but also um, Sweden's role in the process. And I know that in this audience, I'm sure we have just as distinguished experts as we have up here on the panel, but we also have Perhaps some of you that know that there is a conflict in Colombia but and that there is a peace process, but maybe not so much more. Uh, and therefore I have asked, uh, I think I will start with you, Natalia. If, if we're looking at the Colombian conflict, it's a long conflict, um, and we, 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 we can't even start to, to try to describe the whole conflict here, but if, if you would mention one thing that we here need to understand about the Colombian conflict. What would that be? Okay, good afternoon everyone and thank you for having us here. If I have to say one thing I will say it's that the coin has two faces. I currently work with the ex-combatants helping them to reintegrate into society and 70% of them were victims because they were recruited, recruited when they were underage around uh, 14 years old. So that's like one thing I would like to mention is that the coin has two faces and these people that are now ex-combatants, they used to be victims of all this long uh, history of conflict. Thank you. Um, Patricia, what would you say if you would mention one thing that we need to understand? Bien. Pues este es un conflicto eh, que tiene un problema que se está regionalizando en Latinoamérica, que no es un problema solamente ya de Colombia, sino que eh, con los últimos hechos pues podemos decir que este está yéndose a otras fronteras eh, y que el conflicto entonces 
tiende a convertirse no solo en algo de Colombia, de los sujetos en Colombia, sino también más allá de las fronteras de Colombia. Y eso es, es realmente un peligro, una amenaza. I would like to say, I would like to say that um, the conflict in Colombia is becoming regionalized. It's crossing the borders into neighboring countries, and it's not just a problem for Colombia anymore, but it's a problem for the whole continent and the region. Finally, Gloria, we have now uh, two aspects, the two coins that Natalia were talking about and also the regionalization um, mentioned by um, Patricia. What would you like to, to add, Gloria? Buenas tardes a todas y a todos. Eh, fundamentalmente, tener claro que en Colombia todavía hay conflicto. Good evening, uh, good, good afternoon, uh, everybody. The, the most fundamental thing is to understand that there's still a conflict on in Colombia. Que estamos en un momento muy importante para, toda los, para todas las colombianas y colombianos. We are at a very important moment for all Colombians. Que este proceso y conseguir la paz en Colombia va mucho más allá que acallar los fusiles. And uh, the process to, to find peace in Colombia goes much further than just uh, silencing the, the weapons, the arms. Que si se llega una, una firma y un acuerdo entre las dos partes, es donde empieza el trabajo duro. And it's only when a agree peace agreement has been signed that the real work begins. Y que allí es donde también es muy importante el aporte de todos, colombianas y colombianos, pero también de la comunidad internacional. And that is when the support of all Colombians, but also the international community, is most important. Thank you, uh, Gloria. That listening to these three um, uh, aspects, Marie, um, we're talking about the regionalization, um, and as I mentioned, we're talking about a very long uh, conflict. Um, Gloria highlighted that the real work will begin after we perhaps reach this. Um, a, finally, a, a peace agreement. Um, where is Swedish politics in that? Are we encompassing these aspects, these key aspects that they have raised? Good afternoon, all of you, and thank you so much for inviting the embassy to participate in, in this very important uh, seminar. Uh, we totally, these are our close partners on my side, left and right hand side, and we totally are agreeable on what, what they say. I perhaps also would like to add, when we talk about the conflict in Colombia, we always say a 50 year long war. But I would really like to say that Colombia actually has had uh, conflicts since independence, even though if FARC has been struggling for 50 years. And that, I think, also is very important to, to understand. And then also to underline that Sweden, with its bilateral development cooperation for the last 20 years, has contributed immensely to peace construction by giving small, flexible, and innovative support to very important Colombian initiatives so that we are where we are today. And uh, I think we should feel proud that we have been able to participate in such way in the Colombian peace process with Swedish uh, development cooperation. When did Swedish development cooperation start with Colombia? And it has the, is the most important part the, the development aid, would you say? We could say that um, Swedish diplomatic relations with Latin America started in Colombia, and it started in the beginning of, of the 19th century when the Swedish king sent out a military to struggle with Simon Bolivar. And since then, we have been diplomatic, uh, we have had diplomatic presence in Colombia, and we have very close relations with Colombia. Uh, we also, the company, Swedish company Ericsson, 
was one of the first business deals that they made in the world was made with Colombia, and that was 1896. And since then we have a presence of important Swedish companies. In the 70s, Swedish civil society started to come to Colombia through with, um, now I don't remember, UBV, I think uh, was the name. And they were there with, with volunteers. And that in turn led to Swedish bilateral development cooperation, which we started in 1996 with the support to the uh, Defensor del Pueblo, which could be translated to Ombudsmanna Embetet in Colombia. And that has been an extremely strategic cooperation where we have worked with human rights and protection of human rights. So Swedish cooperation go way back. And what we hear here is Marie addressing several parts and issues, which I think we will be addressing all of them. It, we're talking about uh, business, we're talking about development aid, but also one important aspect that's in many ways put this work um, at the forefront was the civil society involvement also. Uh, but you also mentioned that Sweden has been key in taking us to where we are today with the peace processes. And this is a challenging question, but I think it, I will direct it to um, Patricia first, and then I will uh, ask Gloria Natalia to, to add. What is happening in the peace process now? I know it's a big question, but what we hear here in Sweden, in media, is we hear a bit about the meetings. We see in the, in the news when they've been to Oslo or uh, in um, Cuba. Um, and that is what we hear. What is, what is your perspective of what is happening right now in the peace process? Oficialmente, las negociaciones de paz están en La Habana. Sin embargo, en todo el territorio nacional, inclusive podríamos decir que hay pequeñas negociaciones de sectores que no están en La Habana, pero que están también preparándose para en materia de acuerdos. Y hay algunos en Noruega y hay otros que están en Colombia, en las organizaciones indígenas, las organizaciones campesinas, eh, las organizaciones de mujeres que también se están pensando en sus Adam, acuerdos. Eh, por favor. Mm -hmm. um, the, official, the official negotiations are being held in Havana right now, um, but there's also unofficial negotiations on going on in Colombia with women's organizations, indigenous organizations, and, and farmers' organizations in Colombia. In these uh, unofficial, because what we hear is, of course, more about the official negotiations. Who is, um, what form are the unofficial um, negotiations? Bueno, in La Habana, there are two parts. There is the government and there is the la guerrilla de las FARC, no está ni siquiera las otra, la otra guerrilla. Eh, y la sociedad civil no, he, no ha participado directamente, han abierto algunos foros para que la sociedad participe, pero digamos más allá, eh, la sociedad civil ha generado algunos espacios, muy pocos. En the negotiations in Havana are being held between the FARC, guerrillas, and the government, and other armed groups. Uh, not even the other armed groups are being present at those negotiations. Uh, there's been some um, uh, forest, forums held in Colombia with civil society, uh, but civil society has not been present in Havana at the official negotiations. Gloria, um, you represent a, w a women's organization, and uh, as we hear, Patricia here is saying um, there are no NGOs present in Havana. Are there any women present in the in in Cuba? Pues como lo como lo dice la compañera, es una negociación que se está dando allí entre las dos partes, las que tienen las armas. 
eh, la población civil, las mujeres y las organizaciones estamos pues escuchando lo que han ido informando también en los medios. Just as the comrade is, is saying, the negotiations take place between the two parties who have the weapons, that is the, the FARC and, and the government, and the, the civil society, the, the other organizations are, are only participating. Que lo que hemos escuchado, lo que están diciendo por los medios. The, the only thing we know is what we hear about in the, the media. Lo cual es una información muy general. Which is a very general information. De la cual la población estamos a la expectativa. And the, the, the population we are hoping, we are waiting. Y la participación va más allá en ese sentir y querer que realmente esta vez sea posible. And uh, our participation is more hoping that this will be possible this time. Creemos que va a haber un momento donde vamos a poder participar mucho más porque los ciudadanos y ciudadanas civiles de Colombia tenemos también mucho que decir. Mm. We we believe there will be a moment when we will be called upon and, and be able to participate because the uh, the citizens of Colombia have a lot to say in this process. Pues hemos sufrido los efectos de la guerra directamente y en su mayoría hemos sido los que hemos puesto, puesto los muertos y las muertas. We are the ones who have suffered the consequences of this war and we are the ones who have seen and have, have been killed and, and suffered in this process. Y desde la perspectiva de las mujeres, mucho menos todavía no hemos tenido una participación directa. Uh, and from the women's perspective, we have had a much less uh, effective participation. Aunque en todas las acciones que como organización de mujeres estamos haciendo, vamos en una apuesta por la vida y por la paz. And in everything we are doing, we are trying to, uh, to participate, to, to contribute to life and to, to peace. You, you say, Gloria, that the, there will be a moment when we will be um, asked to, to add. Um, when do you think... Um, How late in the process do you think your voices will be called upon? Or is it, um, and how likely is it that you will be asked to, as a women's movement? Pues el momento exactamente no sabría decir en qué momento, pero lo que sí esperamos es que las partes entiendan que la población civil y las mujeres tenemos mucho que decir en lo que ha significado la guerra en los cuerpos y, las, y la, el alma de las mujeres. We cannot say exactly at what moment we will be called upon to, to participate, but we hope that both parties will see that the women and the population has to contribute to this process. How la, about... Oh. <laughs> Disculpe. Las mujeres But, venimos construyendo y apostándole de diferentes perspectivas a que ese momento se dé y a que podamos realmente ser parte activa mm. y, y dinámica dentro de este proceso. Mm. And as women we are hoping that by constructing, by, by articulating, we hope that this moment will come about and that we will be able to make an effective and, uh, and constructive participation to this process. Patricia. Um, Gloria is saying here that she's quite confident um, that there will come a time when women will be will be asked to participate. You represent the indigenous population. Are you as confident that that your perspective will be raised in the process? Nosotros, los indígenas, nos hicimos invitar. No por las buenas. Eh, una delegación nuestra eh, y a través de procesos de encuentros entre los pueblos indígenas hemos eh, apartado una cita para ir a La Habana. Inclusive no estamos seguros si nos reciban, pero no pensamos irnos de ahí hasta que nos permitan hablar. No considero que nos, nos deban invitar, tenemos que ir hasta allá porque creemos que no hay apertura ahora para permitir a la sociedad civil realmente participar. Entonces, antes de que se cierre, como la, la, el principio de la negociación es que se cierra todo hasta que esté acordado todo, entonces consideramos que es antes donde debemos ir a hablar, no después. Um, 
as indigenous organizations, we, we have not and we will not wait to be invited. We invited ourselves to Havana because our voice is too important to, to not be heard. Uh, we're sending a delegation to Havana um, and we will stay in Havana until they listen to until they listen to us, until they pay attention to us. I think um, listening to before to what Marie was saying and also knowing um, Swedish policy on, on women's participation and also indigenous issues, and also as you highlighted, Marie, that uh, Sweden has played a big role in, in taking us here, is what is Sweden doing to, to change what Gloria and uh, Patricia is highlighting here? Should we... Should we do more? Could we do more? Uh, I would like to say that we, since we have started the bilateral development cooperation, we have been very brave, and we have worked in a, in a sense to to all the time expand the space. We have not been in the center; we are on the edges all the time, in order to challenge all these abnormities that has been going on in Colombia. And one one thing which we did very early was to, and, that, and this also I'm very proud of, that we 2003 stud, uh, financed a study that UNDP did, which name was, uh, what, what should you say, Återvänsgränd med, med utgång, in Sweco Digo. E, e, and that there we had the analysis of the roots of this conflict, which encompasses what now my colleagues say here. And out from that, we started to construct small projects. And one of those projects was to, uh, um, in six very conflictive areas, we created peace building initiatives together with UNDP. This in turn, has been very, very um, um, absolutely essential when it has come to the regional uh, consultations that the peace negotiators have done, where they have invited civil society organizations and where they have been able to come up with uh, their uh, preoccupations and their ideas and how to, what, uh, what is essential in this peace process. And another thing I also would like to say, which has been very, very important in our work in Colombia, is to work with women as actors for peace. Perhaps we have not been successful in that sense that we don't have so competent women as we have here around the negotiation table. But I promise you that women has had a voice through these regional seminars where we have financed with Swedish taxpayers' money and also participated in these peace negotiations to be able to give uh, input to the negotiators. So, so this has been very, very essential. And I would say that UNDP would never have been able to organize these seminars in such a short notice without this very strategic and brave support from Sweden. I'm going to get to you in a second, Natalia, but I want to ask a follow-up question to you, Marie, because what we've been talking here in several seminars, not only here, but also uh, at other places in Almedalen when it comes to women's participation and also uh, ethnic minorities or indigenous population, is the political will. Uh, and when you mentioned several of the things that Sweden have done, um, one thing that you didn't mention explicitly is diplomacy. How is Sweden using pressure uh, diplomatically to, to change this because even if because what I know as a feminist organization is that even if we bring women together we organize them often or indigenous populations often when it's lacking is the political pressure what kind of political pressure mm. is, is Sweden using I know Norway has taken a leading role in the uh, in much of the um, discussions also but in Havana. In Havana. While so. perhaps Sweden is in lead in Colombia, I don't know. Yeah. But but, uh, but please perhaps to say here that in in our embassy, in our way of working, Swedish way of working in Colombia, there is no difference between development cooperation and diplomacy. It's totally married together and we cannot distinguish here. 
So everything we do, it's followed by a political uh, dialogue in all levels all the time, and we are requested as a partner. That so the residence the, of of the ambassador, my residence, is used all the time as a platform where we invite people to come together and to have this exactly what you say, these strategic, very important political discussions, in order to change to protect the, the conventions which we all have agreed upon. I think we will also come back to what plans there are for the future. I know, Gloria, you have a, a comment, um, and I will let you give that comment very briefly, because then I want to talk about one important um, issue of the peace process that also not the organization that Natalia is working for is trying to address the issue of reintegration uh, of um, ex-combatants, um, but, but you wanted to make a comment to what Maria was saying, so please. No, decirles que la participación de Suecia en Colombia y el apoyo a las organizaciones sociales de mujeres específicamente, hablando por la nuestra, ha sido muy importante y vital, porque ha ido mucho más allá de lo económico, de ese aporte lo económico. Han sido esas amigas y amigos de la paz y de la construcción y de creer en el proceso de las mujeres que con su respaldo, con su incidencia, siendo los ojos y la voz de las mujeres afuera del país, han permitido que nosotras nos mantengamos en la región. Que hoy, 40 años después, estemos allí haciendo resistencia y construyendo paz. I would like to say that the Swedish support for the, the social uh, organizations for, for women has been very important. It has gone far beyond the economic aspects. Swedish support, support from Swedish uh, fr friends, has both maintained uh, the, the voice uh, of, of Colombian women outside of the country, but also in the regions. And this has been fundamental for our role in the peace process. Please go ahead. I would like to, to give you an example, and it's uh, the, the aid that the Swedish Embassy and the and CIDA has given to ACR, the Colombian Agency for Integration, and it's not only about money. In 2009, we received we, a Swedish expert on gender, came to ACR, and for two years, we built together the gender strategy for a, these ex-combatants. It was all for men and for women, with a focus of women, of course. So it was just a quick example of, of what Gloria was saying. Yep. Um, no, sorry. <laughs> you can get back later. Uh, but now I want to uh, move uh, a bit further, We're talking about reintegration and the work of your organization, which is also one key aspect of, of, of a sustainable peace in, in Colombia, the issue of reintegration. And when we're talking about reintegration, it's really, you better tell it than I do. What is reintegration in Colombia? So what we, what we try to do is we receive these ex-combatants. Most of them, as I said at the beginning, were recruited when they were 14 years old. And they don't know basically much about the civil life. So we give them support, psychological support, we have alliances with the Ministry of Education to give them education. We have uh, also alliances with uh, another agency in charge of job training. And we try to give them tools to come back to civil life and to sail in the legality, to have, like, to have their duties and the rights of being a Colombian. So that's basically our, our focus. You do something quite interesting, uh, and that is working on reintegration during an armed conflict. And for you others, what is often the case is that after there is a peace agreement, a peace accord, then you start the reintegration. You try to take the then ex-combatants and, um, and bring them back to, to regular life, so to say. But you're doing this now. Yeah. How? Why, or why <laughs> rather? Why? Well, all How? this... Sorry. <laughs> we had some peace agreements with the paramilitaries between 2003 and 2006, and then a lot of ex-combatants came out of the, of the war. So the, the program started, and at the same time we have uh, ex-combatants leaving the guerrilla, running away from them. So they're sick of being in the jungle, and they say, okay, I want to go back to civil life. So we needed something to give to this, to this population. So then is when the reintegration program starts. It's a big challenge because as there's people leaving the FARC and the, and the guerrillas, there's also recruitment uh, at the same time. 
So we have to deal with this, we call it like a wheel where there's people entering the, the water wheel and there's people also exiting. So it's a big challenge and uh, there's also a lot of security issues with that the mobilized that escape the guerrilla. It's not easy, it would be much easier if we have a peace agreement and then there's no more uh, armed conflict. But at the same time then the, pro the problem is also big. It's only the beginning of a long, long run that Colombia has to go through. I know that one thing that um, Sweden has highlighted uh, a lot lately, and you mentioned Ericsson, for instance, is, is business involvement. And this has also been something that's been raised when it comes to, to reintegration. Um, is it easy? Is that the way forward? Well, that's one of our main challenges is this. Is stigmatization of the demobilized, of the ex-combatants, and this is totally linked with the private sector because the private sector is the ones that will give um, employment to these people. So one of our main uh, tasks and uh, challenges is to actually go to this private sector to tell them like, hey, this is people that also suffer as this, the owners of this company also suffer. So this is one of our strategies to actually go, go to the private sector, share with them what we're doing. We don't always ask them for jobs. We don't only ask them for money. We, for, for example, there's Coca-Cola in Colombia. Their uh, managers, they come to our offices and they give workshops about accounting, about uh, different skills that our population needs. So the alliances are in very different levels and in very different ways in which the company feels comfortable to providing it. And this all leads to one important thing, as th and it is that this peace building is between everyone in Colombia. It's not only one part, it's not only private sector, it's not only government, it's not only civil society. It's we all have to deal with this, and we all have to, to step forward and actually work for it. Uh, Patricia. Um, we hear here one positive aspect of, of business, and we often in these discussions talk about business as such. Do we need a more uh, nuanced um, picture of what business can do? I know you have been very critical uh, when it comes to business as also a driving force behind uh, the conflict and the, the violence. Sí, eminentemente la guerra tiene profundas eh, raíces en la economía. Yes, yes. The, the, the war in Colombia has roots in the economy, or has economic roots. Y si no se intervienen las industrias de, que cumplan con también aspectos sociales, legales, eh, fines y toda una cadena de lo legal, pues... Um, pues no se puede generar en principio paz en Colombia, por eso es importante también la intervención del sector privado, um, no solamente para temas de reincorporación, sino todo lo demás que concierne a la paz en Colombia. The, the private sector needs to be involved in the peace process um, to, to provide employment, of course, but also on other issues, and they need to comply with standards on social standards and standards on, on the environment as well. Do, um, I know you, Gloria, because what we haven't been talking about uh, here is also the dangers of being involved in um, the, the, the peace um, process. What is the situation for, for activists or others that want to be involved. I know that um, many from your organization are sometimes um, threatened. What do you think will happen after a possible peace agreement? Will it change? No podemos negar que en Colombia han cambiado cosas y se han mejorado. We cannot, uh, we cannot forget, or should not forget, uh, and we cannot negate that in Colombia things have changed and, and has gone better. Que se ha avanzado en la construcción de un proceso y de un camino. Mm. That we have advanced in the construction of a process and of a, of a way forward. Pero aún así, 
Allí la vida sigue estando en riesgo y sobre todo de los defensores y defensoras de derechos humanos. Pero mm. incluso así, hay muchos riesgos, y particularmente así para los defensores de derechos humanos. La juventud sigue siendo un riesgo eh, eh, en nuestros sectores, en nuestros barrios. Son los jóvenes los que están involucrando en todos los conceptos y temarios de la guerra, narcotráfico, prostitución, drogadicción. Young people are particularly likely to be uh, Uh, to be involved in all aspects of, of the war and of drug trafficking and prostitution and other social ills. Jóvenes que nos lo están matando en Barranca Bermeja solamente en lo que va corrido el año tenemos más de 25 jóvenes desde 14 a 23 años que han sido asesinados. Mm. Just to take one example in Bar Barranca Bermeja uh, Bar Barranca Bermeja uh, 25 uh, young people have been have been killed during this year. 25. <laughs> 25 people ha have been killed during the course of this year. Mm. Y muchas las mujeres como madres, como esposas, como hermanas, como vecinas que estamos enfrentando y sufriendo el dolor de la guerra. Mm. And many mothers as uh, as parts of the neighborhood, as mothers, as uh, uh, as uh, Us women have also suffered effects of the war. Y mujeres como de, de la organización femenina popular que estamos denunciando, que estamos visibilizando toda la situación, pues, lógicamente también hemos sido asesinadas, amenazadas, mm. si no es no so, a nosotras, a nuestros hijos directamente, como ha sido mi caso. Uh, and for, from us, from the popular feminist organizations, we have denounced the present situation. We have been victimized, we have been threatened, and uh, if not uh, directly at us, then at uh, our youth, at our children, as in my case particularly. Nuestra preocupación en este proceso, desde el aspecto de las mujeres, our concern in this process from the women's perspective, es que quede invisibilizado una vez más todo lo que ha significado la guerra en el cuerpo de las mujeres. Es que todo lo que la guerra ha significado o intruded en las mujeres en esta guerra va a ser de nuevo invisible y no va a ser visto. En el proceso pasado de la supuesta desmovilización de los paramilitares, nada se ha dicho sobre toda la violación asesinato, tortura y desmembresía de los cuerpos de las mujeres que se hicieron en este tiempo. In the past process, in the demobilization of the paramilitary forces, nothing was said about the violations, about the rapes, about the attacks on women's bodies that had taken place during that part of the war. Y nos preocupa y nos tememos que va a pasar algo similar en este Proceso, si no hay una presión internacional, si no hay un acompañamiento y una exigencia para que este tema sea tratado desde allí. Mm. And we are concerned that something similar will happen in this peace process if there is not uh, an international pressure, if there is not an, uh, an international opinion to press for that these aspects are discussed and, and brought forward in the, in the peace process. Y el otro aspecto que nos preocupa mucho es en esa preparación y por eso digo la importancia de continuar con el acompañamiento de la Embajada de Suiza y de todos ustedes, es porque todos estos hombres que están enseñados a una vida de guerra y a ejercer el poder con un arma, cuando estén en las casas, ¿cuál va a ser la realidad de las mujeres y cuál va a ser su situación? And another concern for us is when all the men who have participated in this war, that have grown used to, uh, to taking power through, through weapons, when they are demobilized, what will their position in their own homes, in their own uh, ha houses be? How will they continue this domination within their own families? Um, I think what we're hearing now is that a peace process will not be the end goal. Uh, there is a big uh, work ahead. Um, and a lot of organizations has raised serious concerns about Sweden's role. We've talked here about what Sweden have done uh, in so far, in a very long time. Um, but now we're discussing um, pulling out development aid. And you said earlier for us, development aid and diplomacy is more or less the same thing for us. Um, will you lose 
a big tool for your political pressure that Gloria is is asking for? I just came from a seminar here on on the other square where where it was totally clear that there is no decision taken yet. So I I, I cannot comment on what will happen or not. But but, but if it if it would happen because it's it's been raised and I think our development aid minister said that as many countries in Latin America today are middle income countries, we should devote the development aid to where the poorest people are, which is mainly in in, in Africa. So it is definitely in the in the shadows. W what would it mean f for you when it comes to the, the power that you would have in, in diplomacy and the possibilities? Yeah. No, I would... If we say like this, that was what I wanted to come back to um, when, when I couldn't come in previously, that um, we have all the time been very clear with Colombia, and sometimes we have been uncomfortable, like uh, during the previous president, where in his last period when he said that there was no internal conflict in Colombia, and we all the time, Sweden all the time insisted Yes, there is an internal armed conflict, and you need to find a negotiated solution on this. Right now, Sweden, through its diplomacy, is very clear that we are concerned with the new expanded military justice. So we all the time uh, are, are expressing our concern, and we are clear on our positions. Of course, if it would be so that, that suddenly our possibilities to step in and finance, we would be reduced. But still, our close relations with Colombia and, uh, and uh, the trust that we have built will, will continue to be there. And we will continue to be a very active partner to Colombia. And we will continue to bring up issues which are important for our relations. Uh, but I, as Gloria mentioned before, the big work with a, with, a, uh, with a sustainable peace will start when the agreement is made. Then we need to go in and we need to work closely with the demobilization agency to, uh, to work on a good DDR program to take care of, of those um, concerns which Gloria rose, what will happen with all these men, mostly they are men, unfortunately. But would you say that that would be possible if this, as you're saying, you can't comment if it will happen, but let's theorize again, because I think that is what many people are worried about here mm. in Sweden. Could we continue to be, because we're very proud and, uh, yes. for the work that you are doing currently, yes. um, but could we continue if this decision was was made or would it would it would it change we w we internally in the embassy would of course like to see an exit strategy in for our development aid in Colombia and Colombia also would like to see that we have entered into free trade agreement Colombia has requested a, a, mem a membership in OECD Colombia is entering into a new inter internal policy phase and of course in that scenery, that they should not be recipients of aid in the long run. But right now, it's absolutely needed. And this we were very clear on in the paper that was written from the embassy to our government when we were asked this question, what you said. We said, right now, it's not a very... It's not an appropriate moment for Sweden to pull out. We need to be present when the peace agreement is signed to be able to work and to supply with the experts and advice. So, so, so I would like to have it in my embassy, yes. Yes, thank you. Um, I want to touch a bit more on the issue of business role because we heard two different aspects here and that is also one key element of uh, Swedish policy towards Colombia more and more. But I also want to open up the floor for uh, questions. Um, we have one here right away, um, please. And then we need one of the translator's microphones, unfortunately. Uh, 
Uh, my name is Rodri Williams. I'm uh, with the International Legal Assistance Consortium in uh, Stockholm. Can you hear me? Yep. Uh, um, but I worked before as a consultant, um, including some work on restitution in Colombia, Restitución de las Tierras. And uh, what I'm wondering is, um, I know that one of the first things that Santos did, the current president, on taking office was to get a fairly groundbreaking law on restitution and reparation for victims passed. That's currently being implemented. I also know that the major breakthrough in the FARC negotiations recently was agreement in principle on how to deal with the land issue as between FARC and the government. Uh, and I wonder the extent to which the implementation of the current restitution law gives you hope uh, that it may be a good model um, for addressing land issues uh, in the context of peace with the FARC. Yes. This is one important aspect of what is um, currently um, very up to date in the process. I don't know, Patricia, would you like to start by commenting? La ley de restitución de tierras es una pieza en el rom gran rompecabezas que debe ser eh, la protección de tierras, más cuando el conflicto en Colombia, como lo decía la embajadora, es por tierra y hace más de 50 años los unos quitándole la tierra a los otros. Y eso obviamente es una pieza de la, la política pública grande que debe haber, que es un acuerdo no solo entre Estado y grupos eh, armados, sino entre grupos armados, Estado, sociedad civil, campesinos y eh, las personas y también la agroindustria. Entonces es una pieza. This, um, this law and, and, this, and the, the issue of land is a big headache for, for Colombia as a whole. Um, it doesn't just include FARC and the government, it includes other armed groups, private companies, civil society, etc. There's various actors involved. Do you want to cut? Sí, entonces sí es una esperanza, pero digamos por sí sola no constituye tampoco eh, una conquista que nos permita de verdad hablar de protección de derechos reales y materiales sobre la tierra, sino que es una pieza. This, this law gives us hope, but it's just one piece of a, of a bigger puzzle, jigsaw puzzle, um, and it's not, the, it's not a solution to all the problems. Anyone want to, to add any thoughts on the law? I'm thinking... Como lo acaba de decir la compañera Patricia, es una pieza de todo este gran proceso, pero una pieza que se tiene que cuidar mucho y que va por la construcción de confianzas. Clarian, cl yeah, yes. as, uh, as my uh, comrade was saying, uh, the, the law on, uh, on, on land reform is just one piece, but it's a very important piece, and it's a piece that has to be maintained, and uh, that has to be maintained, exactly. Cabe anotar que en Colombia se habla de más de 100.000 hectáreas de expropiación, y el Estado está hablando de restituir 4.000 hectáreas. Uh, in Colombia, we are talking about millions or, or hundred, uh, hundreds of thousands of hectares, and now we are talking about only a part of that being redistributed. Es or re-given re re back to its previous owners, really, which is it's about. Es una parte de todo este proceso, pero también tiene sus, sus situaciones. También la realidad que estamos viviendo es que varios que los que se han metido en la restitución de tierras han sido asesinados o amenazados. Entonces, son eslabones que se van presentando en este proceso, el cual tenemos que en esa creación de confianzas cuidar y ayudar para que se pueda dar. Mm. This is an important part of the process, but we have to remember the number of the people who have been involved in this process of giving back the lands to the rightful owners have been murdered or have, have been threatened. And that's why I'm saying it's very important to take care and to maintain this process and to protect it. Yo lo dije cuando iniciamos que 
la paz va mucho más allá de acallar los fusiles, hay que también mirar cómo contrarrestar toda esa violencia estructural y lo de la, la tierra es parte de eso. As we began, I said that peace goes much further than just silencing the arms, and uh, and it's about combating the structural and fu fundamental discriminations that exist in, in, in Colombia on a more general scale, and land is exactly one of the key aspects in this. Patricia, you wanted to, to add something also. Sí. Eh, uno de los puntos de la mesa de La Habana es eh, un acuerdo sobre tierras y en ese acuerdo de, de tierras las FARC está solicitando zonas de reservas para sus familias en, eh, y campesinas en zonas eh, que son de territorios de comunidades afros e indígenas. Eh, Land is one of the issues in the negotiations between the FARC and the government and the FARC has been, has requested land for their families and their um, and their combatants in zones or in areas that are uh, that belong to Afro-Colombian communities or indigenous communities. Lo que es claramente un desconocimiento a los derechos eh, adquiridos en nuestro país por los grupos étnicos eh, desplazados también y desarragados por la violencia. So this this goes against or this would breach the rights of Afro-Colombian communities, indigenous peoples, or or displaced peoples in Colombia. Y yo estoy aquí como delegada de la Organización Nacional Indígena de Colombia precisamente para pedirle a Suecia, a la Embajada de Suecia, que haga lo posible de permitir o hacer incidencia como lo hace Noruega en Colom en, en La Habana para hablar sobre estos temas y no se cometa más violaciones también en esos acuerdos de paz a, a estos grupos étnicos que no su voz no ha sido tenida en cuenta en estos temas agrarios. As a, as a representative of um, the National Organization for Indigenous Peoples of Colombia, I would like to ask the Swedish government to have more have a presence in Havana and make sure that these rights are being respected, the rights of indigenous and Afro-Colombian communities. Thank you, Patricia. Um, I know that you want to comment, Marie, but I'm going to give all of you the opportunity of a last comment. But I want to squeeze in uh, one last question, and we have one here from the second row. And I think this will be our last question. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is uh, Milos Kush. I work with the Swedish Fellowship of Reconciliation. I've been uh, working in Colombia also for a very long time. And I have a question for uh, Patricia and, uh, and Gloria. Um, that, I mean, given the, the fact that the conflict is still going on in, in the rural areas in Colombia, even though there are negotiations, and that there are laws in Colombia that prohibit any contact with the armed actors, how does that influence your possibility, um, indigenous groups' possibilities, uh, and the civil society's possibilities, to um, reach humanitarian agreements in the, the worst, uh, uh, with the areas where, where the conflict is uh, very, very hard and has a large impact on, on, on the population. Okay. Um, given the fact that any contact with uh, the armed actors in Colombia is criminalized, how does that affect your possibility to reach humanitarian agreements in, in, a local, uh, in the local areas where the conflict is going on, um, regardless of what's happening in Havana? I mean, the war is going on in, in the rural areas. Um, inclusive um, lo decían estos días y nos lo así me lo hacían caer en cuenta aquí en Suecia que en, Colo que en Colombia no está no se aplica eh, eh, el DIH el derecho internacional humanitario eh, y que inclusive cualquier diálogo que pueda tener eh, un civil para proteger su propia vida o la de su familia ante 
cualquier grupo armado, eh, entonces es ilegal y por ende hay muchísimos colombianos detenidos en un país de guerra. Y uno de los temas que en La Habana se debería tratar, es primordial, es ese, ese, ese tema del DIH y el otro punto es el de las minas antipersona. Y sin ese acuerdo obviamente no debería avanzar a hablar de temas de paz porque eso está violando la vida de muchísimos ciudadanos en Colombia. This is this is a problem in, in Colombia because the go Colombian government uh, prohibits any contact of the civilian population with the armed groups, even if it's for humanitarian purposes to, to protect their land or their, their lives, it's it's prohibited. Um, another issue is is mines, uh, and so these two issues are endangering lives in Colombia. E esto es algo, por ejemplo, que lo hace ver los ciudadanos de Suecia. Digamos, esto no está en el debate en la mesa de La Habana. Y ahí la importancia eh, de la observación internacional en el tema del conflicto en Colombia, porque quizás esos temas no los estamos viendo y, mira, hemos tenido que viajar tan lejos para que un ciudadano nos lo dijera y lo tuviéramos que tener en cuenta o inclusive en este seminario para poderlo escuchar. This is, um, this is symbolic as well of the, the importance of uh, the international community and the eyes of the international community. This issue that was raised by the man in the audience is not on the, on the table in Havana. It's not being discussed. Um, and, it, and we had to travel all the way to Sweden and someone in Sweden had to remind us of the importance of this issue because it is, is crucial. Gloria, the question was also raised for you. Un poco desde lo que dice Patricia, las razones y las condiciones que hay en nuestro país para la población civil hacer ese tipo de acuerdos. Uh, exactly what, what Patricia is saying on the, the conditions for the civilian population to make these kind of agreements. Pero aquí voy a hablar más desde la perspectiva y la apuesta de la organización femenina popular. Pero mm. I will talk more from my particular organization. Como mujeres en la región del Magdalena Medio, una zona muy de mucho conflicto, mucha riqueza y disputa de control del territorio. Mm. As women of one region which has particularly high level of conflict of, uh, of richness but also of, uh, of conflict over control, uh, control over the territory. Una postura nuestra es la no interlocución con el actor armado. One of our positions is to not, uh, not uh, inter interlocate, not to interact directly with, uh, with armed actors. Nuestro trabajo va desde los principios de la civilidad y la autonomía. We work based on the principles of civilianness and uh, autonomy. Pero desde allí y con eslogans como las mujeres no parimos ni forjamos hijos e hijas para la guerra. Mm. And as, uh, uh, with slogans such as we as women do not give birth to or educate uh, our sons and daughters for the war. Vamos haciendo un trabajo formativo para que la población civil no se involucre en el conflicto. We are making an educational work in order for the civilian population not to get involved in the conflict. Trabajamos por quitarle los jóvenes a la guerra y que ellos no sean involucrados en la guerra. Mm. We are trying to keep the youth, the, the, the young people away from the war and to make them not involved in the war. Y ahí a destacar también esa participación de Suecia con el acompañamiento internacional. And there, it's fundamental to, to indicate the role of Sweden as, uh, to, uh, as an international uh, uh, partner or accompanier. Con brigadas internacionales de paz, de las cuales muchos suecos han estado allí. Mm. From the international peace brigades in which many Swedes have participated and been there. Y nos permiten movernos en las regiones, llegar a sitios donde el Estado a veces no está. And this support has allowed us to reach places, to reach regions uh, which have previously been inaccessible and where the state cannot even reach. Nos permite tener una postura y construir paz desde las mujeres. Mm -hmm. And this has allowed us to keep our position and to be building peace from the women. Gracias, Clara. We only have a few more minutes and um, I, we've actually used up our time, but if... 
I see you smiling in the back, so I will actually, um, we will have the time for a last comment. And as I mentioned when we started, we're at the Politician's Week in Sweden, and what has been raised, I think, over and over again. I wish we had a full day. These guests have traveled all the way from Colombia to come here, and what is very clear from this conversation is that there are so many different layers to this long conflict, and there are so many different topics to, to draw out. But to return to where we started, Sweden's role, and the issue that we discussed here, uh, and what has been raised, is pulling out Swedish development aid. It's, as you mentioned, it was you'd been to a seminar where it was re very clear that it, there hasn't been a decision. Uh, but being here at the Swedish Politicians Week, uh, what would be your message to Swedish politicians um, that are now talking about focusing on, on business and cultural exchange and rather um, pulling out the development aid? What would be um, your message to Swedish politicians on how you would like to see continued Swedish um, support? What kind of support would you want them to 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 give. And um, I will leave then the final comment to you, uh, Marie, after those three uh, comments. Please, Natalia. Okay. Um, I will say that this is not only about money. This is not only about like getting a lot of money to implement stuff. This is also about knowledge, about sharing your experience uh, as a democratic uh, country and how we can learn from this. We know as we, we have been mentioning, it's the, the beginning of this peace building is only starting after the signature of the peace pro pro process, if we actually have it. And the long, the, um, it's going to last for a long time. So we need your expertise. We need your experts. We need your example in order to, to, to start building a country in peace. Pues usted eh, Suecia y cumplió un papel importante en lo que fue la firma de paz en Guatemala y esa experiencia como lo dice Natalia es la que requerimos también en este proceso Sweden played an important and Sweden played an important role in the signing of the peace accords in Guatemala and we need your expertise and your experience for the process in Colombia as well Eh, y eh, bueno, requerimos que sobre todo Suecia pueda elevar un papel político para generar un franco diálogo entre los actores y eso pueda llevar a acuerdos mucho más sostenibles en el tiempo eh, y en ese sentido creo que puede jugar un papel en este momento, en, en este instante, importante. Um, we believe that the support of a su um, the support from Sweden could uh, could mean a, a, a better and more frank dialogue between the parties. En el cual, eh, porque hay muchos intereses de que el proceso de paz no llegue a través del diálogo, sino por una vía militar, lo que generaría muchos más víctimas para Colombia y eso generaría inclusive un, un conflicto a regionalizarse. There are actors and, and voices in Colombia who do not want a peace process and who do not want a, a, a dialogue to end the war through dialogue. Uh, voices that, um, that want to continue the war and therefore it's important with, this, with Sweden's voice. Inclusive llevaría que cualquier integración económica que ustedes se piensen ahora están firmando la Unión Europea y Estados Unidos y en el marco va Latinoamérica, si, se no, si no se apoyan los procesos de paz y de democracia en estos países, pues van a ser unas cooperaciones económicas sangrientas, como lo que se conoce en la historia cuando hay países en guerra. And if, if economic or trade agreements are reached between Colombia and Sweden or the, the European Union and Colombia, um, without um, a peace agreement in, in Colombia, you will have blood on your hands. It will be a, a, a bloody trade agreement. Reiterar que los objetivos que Suiza tiene en esa cooperación a Colombia, que van en, a, a contribuir a acabar la pobreza, construir la democracia y lo de seguridad, 
repeat the values and the goals that Sweden has always had, which is to reduce poverty, to uh, to, to re uh, reduce the pobreza, the the, the, the security and uh, and the democratic construction. Son vitales para el proceso y para la comunidad allí en la región. Are vital for the process and also for the population in the region. El que la OFP hoy esté y muchas organizaciones en la región. And, and many organizations in the region. Se debe a que llevamos más de 10 años con el apoyo y la cooperación de Suiza. Have benefited from this cooperation with Sweden and are what they are because of this cooperation. Pero un papel también que hacen todos sus pobladores aquí en Suecia es la exigencia también a sus gobernantes y empresas. But the population here in Sweden has to ask of its politicians and, and of its companies. Para que las ayudas o las empresas que entran a Colombia. In order for the companies that get into Colombia. No manejen la doble moral y por un lado nos apoyen y contribuyan al proceso de paz, pero por otro lado también de alguna forma se alimente la guerra. Mm. Do not do so with a double standard, so that they are one hand talking about the need for process uh, for, for peace, but on the other hand indirectly supporting the, the war. No queda sino agradecer todo el apoyo, todo el acompañamiento, decirles que las cartas, que las llamadas, que todas estas acciones que ustedes hacen desde acá y que llegan a nuestros gobernantes es lo que hoy nos permite seguir resistiendo y construyendo vida porque la esperanza no nos la han matado. Uh, and finally, we'd like to give the thanks for all uh, the help, for all the support, for all the solidarity that has gone from Sweden, for, uh, for the letters from, uh, from the commentaries that have gotten to Colombia and that has permitted that we are today where we stand and that have permitted for us to resist the onslaught on civil society in Colombia. Thank you. You will have the final uh, last comment, Marie. And um, I want to ask you, are you worried that Swedish attention to Colombia will, will, will fade? No. No, and, and after this seminar, I'm sure it will not, because it's also not only about an embassy and some stuff in the embassy, it's about the Swedish society. And here we see that there is an interest for Colombia, and we have all these long relations. And I would like to thank you for Resilience Center that you brought up the land law, which is absolutely essential, and where Sweden has played a very important role in the birth of that law. And also Milos, who worked in Colombia, worked in, in the center of transitional justice, also one sector where we are very, very active and where we are contributing to uh, input into the peace process. And I would like to assure you that we are continuing working innovative in the embassy where we also address the Swedish companies and looking into all these aspects which, which had been risen here. And we will also have to be innovative to be able to continue this work in close relation with the rest of the Swedish actors, but also in, the, with, in, in close cooperation with different Colombian actors. Thank you, Marie. The organizations that um, arranged this seminar was Uh, the organization that I work for, uh, Internationella Kvinnoförbundet för fred och frihet, Women's International League for Peace and Freedom, uh, Kristna Freds, Svefor, and the governmental agency SIDA. Um, and if you are interested in following what is happening in Sweden, you can of course contact us as organization all working in Colombia. Um, I want to thank you all for your patience, even though that we used up another 10 minutes of your precious Almedalen time. Um, as I said, I wish we had a full day. They have traveled far to bring their message of the continued need for attention for the issues in Colombia, um, development aid or, or not. Uh, so I'm sure that if you have questions after this, there is an opportunity to raise them. Um, and otherwise, keep updated on what will happen in the peace process. And thank you so much for your attention. And thank you so much for being here.